I'd love to meet your grandmother. Yeah, I'm not sure we're there yet. Really? I just thought we were. Uh, yeah, no. Hey, Barracudas. Ah, we have made it to the penultimate episode of the iCarly Revival series season one. It has been a fun journey taking a look at each episode, sharing my thoughts on the show, and discussing with all of you in the comments. I will actually have two special iCarly videos next week, one on next Thursday for iThursdays, but another one next Saturday to give you my thoughts on the series as a whole with a special guest. So look forward to a lot of content next week. So far, everything looks like the first season is going to end strong, like me. Stop lying. The back half of the season, to me, has found a really nice groove between trying new things to separate its newer adult themes, as well as keep parts of the spirit that make iCarly iCarly. Now, based on news after last week's episode, Wes the Mechanic will be back for this and maybe even in the finale as Carly's new love interest, and Double Dutch should be around still as Harper's new boss, so these storylines will play a part here. So let's see what today's episode offers us, discuss it all, and prepare ourselves for the finale of Season 1 next week. Also, as a reminder, yes, next year when the iCarly Revival series comes back for Season 2, we will continue I Thursdays and cover all of it then. So if you're enjoying these videos and would like to see more coverage like this, be sure to leave a like as it truly helps the video out and I'll double dutch like I'm Corbin Blue and jump in. I want to give a huge thank you to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring today's video. You can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash jordanfringe and enter promo code jordanfringe for 83% off and an extra three months for free. Surfshark VPN is, well, a VPN, a virtual private network. It'll help you secure your digital life at an already great price, especially by using my code at the link down below. You'll get an incredible deal. Surfshark offers one of the best full coverage VPN packages out there. With use of an unlimited number of devices that can all run under one subscription at the same time. Literally as many devices as you want. With apps available on all platforms, PC, Mac, the Linux users out there, even smart TVs, video game consoles, web browsers, you name it, Surfshark has you completely covered. All along with 24-7 live customer support and a full 30-day money-back guarantee to make sure you know it's risk-free by giving them a shot. As well as their strictly no-logs policy which encrypts your data. Meaning that they do not keep any of it, nor does anyone know what you're doing online. A nice security measure in the digital age. Want to watch something that isn't streaming in your country? Like perhaps iCarly like we're discussing in today's video? No problem. Just connect to any of the servers Surfshark has around the world and you'll be able to access libraries of content otherwise not available in your country. It's fast and easy to use, filled with features that go beyond just the basics with a regular VPN. If you want to protect yourself online while browsing as well as help support the channel, again, you can get Surfshark VPN at surfshark.deal slash jordanfringe and enter promo code jordanfringe for 83% off and an extra three months for free. Free. Thanks again to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. Episode 12, I throw a flawless dinner party. Great, it's three in the morning and now I'm hungry. Right off the bat, we see Carly and Wes walking down the hall coming back from a date where we find out a few things in the opener for this episode. One, Wes is Italian, which sparks a conversation about Carly's time in Italy and that she only knows food related things in Italian. Disparatamente. Sorry, I don't speak Italian. Logos binti. What? The other thing we learn is that she can't cook, so that's why she had to learn just the food words made. Mainly. When bringing up that he has to go have a dinner with his Nona, he starts getting weird about inviting Carly over and saying that they aren't ready for that at this point in their relationship. So Carly, being Carly, invites Wes and his grandma over to a dinner party where she now claims that she can cook and is really good at it. Ah, there's nothing like a good consistent character trope. And that's our baseline plot for this episode. In an attempt to impress Wes and his Nona, as well as furthering their relationship into something more serious, she will fake it till you make it. Literally, in this case, with the food. What could go wrong? Everything. Yes, thank you. I think my mysteriously alluding question foreshadowed that. After Spencer is okay with the dinner party happening at his apartment, we see that Spencer and Maeve are passive-aggressively arguing during their new adjustment period of rushing into a relationship and cohabitating. Carly dubs their attitudes as smean, where everything you say is mean, but it's with a smile. You're a loser. You're a loser as well but with a smile. Harper now is working on design after design with outfits for Double Dutch for an upcoming music video, with D&D &D not being into any of the designs she has been presented so far. Also, Carly has these new frontal head braids. I have no comment. I think they're pretty cool. Oh my god, is this character development? Freddy rushes in excited regarding the dinner party, but more importantly to elevator pitch an app he's working on for Carly to test out for the dinner. Bone Appetimer, an instructional cooking app that him as well as Millicent pitch, which is nice to see their relationship have a lot more in common when it comes to the business endeavors they get into, and that she is supporting her dad, as well as she is getting equity in the company. Listen, she knows how to play the field here. Carly quickly jumps into accepting using the app as if she was an eager shark ready to to invest. Hey Barracudas! 
Whipping up a big meal is hard. This is exactly what I need. Freddy is excited for the dinner party, but again, not for the reasons of being happy and supportive for Carly and her potential relationship, but rather the performance and hopeful success of his app functionality. Weston is known to show up to the party, and she gives out some compliments as Wes disappears for a moment to change from his work clothes. And once alone, Nona tells Carly point blank that she doesn't like her. In fact, she's just mean in general, even to Millicent. Carly begins to freak out while cooking, stressing over the fact that she already isn't liked and that the cooking isn't going over the best so far. So that's great, might as well call Grandma Harvey Dent because she's so two-faced. Boo. Maven and Spencer are still at a, ooh, that's a nice looking charcuterie board. Hey. Focus. <clears throat> Sorry. Double Dutch comes over for her outfit designs and crashes the party and invites herself to have dinner as well. Oh, while the food is getting more messed up, bread is getting burnt, and Carly is about to have her own aneurysm between Freddy's app not working for her and being told it's user error, as well as Double Dutch being picky about what she wants to eat. Wes eventually offers to help out, completely starting to know that Carly wasn't being too honest about her being a great cook now. Honestly, he could already tell back in the hallway at the start. Millicent keeps trying to impress or just get validation from Nona, and she just continues to insult her. So there's that. And the final product of the food comes out of the oven, and oh my goodness, Squidward! What? Oh, sorry. Carly, what in the John Carpenter's The Thing is that? I mean, it's a pretty cool looking practical effect and we do appreciate the effort, but how do you mess it up this bad? At least Carly and Wes have a nice moment enjoying doing the dinner party in general. Then Nona starts choking, Carly grabs her to do the Heimlich maneuver, Nona gets angry, Spencer gets a dog. Oh, sorry, we're not there yet. Turns out that Nona wasn't choking, but rather trying to spit back up the raw sausage from the meal, which causes everyone to spit it out after hearing that. Nona doesn't want Carly near her and any shape or form and says that she's in pain from her ribs. I thought she was in pain from the sausage. Ah, that's a good one. Thanks. Wes brings Nona to Carly's apartment to lay down and Carly follows over shortly. Harper, while speaking with Double Dutch and the Funky Bunch, gets inspiration on a final design for an outfit, but when she presents it, Dunkin' Donuts here isn't into it. But Harper finally stands up for herself. She's been nervous of being fired for pushing back in any way because she's an unpredictable diva, so when fighting back on the design and explaining why it works so well, Double Dutch loves this side of Harper and agrees to the outfit. This was a nice character arc over the last two episodes for Harper, finding confidence in her work, but not just to Carly in private when Double Dutch isn't around, but confidence in showing her value to her, to her face, and the products she designs. I feel a lot of people can relate to this feeling, whether it's a job or not. Confidence is hard to pull out of yourself, faced in a perceived power dynamic and fear of the outcome. So taking pride in knowing what you're doing and showing why you are the one doing it is a nice message, and I like going on this small journey with Harper. When Carly goes to her apartment, Nona is laying on the couch seemingly passed out as Carly confesses to not knowing how to cook and that she really likes Wes. All while Wes overhears that part from the other room, then Carly thinks due to Nona's stoic nature and that her body feels a bit cold to the touch that she might be dying or just dead. So she tries to perform some sort of CPR. Listen, Carly, maybe you are just really cursed. Not even on your birthday, just in general. Every time you are at a party, someone dies. Oh, she's fine. Never mind. But this causes Nona to freak out over thinking that she's being attacked by Carly, and Carly freaks out over thinking that Nona was dead. Wes comes out from the other room to a confusing mess, and it's just a wacky situation all around. Cutting back to the other apartment, we get another Titanic scene, and at least they are getting some good use from that set piece. <laughs> Maybe one day we can grow back towards each other. Oh, um... Awkward. Well, due to them, like I said earlier, jumping into things too fast and both not being ready for a relationship. Get it? Relationship? They're on the Titanic. A ship. Stop it, it's not funny. You always ruin all the fun. Yeah, so this ends Menser, or was it Spave? Either way, they end things amicably with each other. Now with Wes and Carly alone, she explains herself and guesses that he doesn't want to continue things with her, but he explains what he meant by her not being ready. Was Nona not being ready to meet Carly, as he was embarrassed by her and how she acts around others, being completely aware of how she treats people and only asking her to be on her best behavior, hence why she was nice at first to everyone when he was around. And they officially become boyfriend and girlfriend, share some smoochies, and Spencer gets a dog. Oh wait, we're actually pretty close to that now. The final scene, we see everyone at the apartment enjoying some spaghetti tacos, been waiting for them to make a cameo already, geez. But Spencer hogs Double Dutch's dog in the time of need after the breakup, and she allows him to hang out with the dog whenever she's over doing work with Harper. Freddy, while disappointed in his app failure, sparks up a new idea for an app that connects animals to people in need of support, like an Airbnb 
Airbnb for pets, as he puts it. And Spencer gets a dog. Yes, we already got to that. Why do you always ruin the fun? I would say this was another fun episode with the gang. A lot of those old iCarly vibes are woven throughout the story. The jokes in this episode hit pretty well, and it became a fun hangout, almost bottle episode-esque situation. I do love how connected the episode feels with handling all of these characters. This episode being a bit better at having so many characters to juggle at once in comparison to last week's, as well as setting up for some future plot points that will come to a head. I believe Wes is back in next week's episode, so we will see how their relationship continues in the finale, hopefully seeing an interesting setup for season two with them, as well as how the split between Spencer and Maeve will affect her being on the show, or will they eventually come back together? Who knows? But one thing I do know is that I want a W for Freddy. He takes another L here, and I just feel bad that his character is stuck in this repeating rut of not getting anywhere by the end of an episode. I hope that the finale can give us a good season ending payoff for him that isn't just a punchline by the end of it, and hopefully in season two, it's not just L after L after L. Give him a girlfriend, or a business that helps him off his feet, or his own apartment. Something for my boy Fredward over here. Maybe a haircut. The show itself is trying to find its own identity throughout season one, and I kind of see it as a mixture of shows like New Girl, Friends, and of course that old iCarly slipping in there as well. So I think season two will structurally and practically come back swinging with a tempo that they have progressively been building episode by episode. So yeah, another solid outing for this week's episode. I look forward to what the finale brings us next week. You gotta let me know in the comments your predictions for next week, as well as I'm curious to see what you all think and or want to see happen. As well as your thoughts on this week's episode. Were you vibing with it? Were you not? Please feel free to share all that down below. You all are amazing. Thanks for hanging out here today. It means a lot to me. Make sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't as we prepare for next week's finale episode for season one of iCarly with our final iCarly revival series, iThursdays. But maybe iThursdays may still have a future beyond this before season two, but I'll save that for a later surprise. I'll be back soon with another video, but until then, later.